How's it going, guys? Happy Saturday. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Always good to see you. So we haven't talked in a while. Um, I'm still house-sitting. That doesn't end until December 1st. So, um, oh, and I've got to talk to you about this. i got to take the van in for its first repair. So I noticed a squeaking, chirping noise coming from the front of the engine. Got out, checked it out. Um, I noticed it less than a week ago, and yesterday, I think I've diagnosed the problem. I think it's a bearing going bad in one of the pulleys. You know, the pulleys that the belt, the fan belt, the serpentine belt go around. I think one of those are going bad because it, this van's only got 22,000 miles on it. It's under warranty. Someone take it in and let them fix it. You know, if it's just the idler pulley, I could fix that 30 minutes. You know, but with a socket, put it on the socket. Uh, release the tension, slip the belt off, undo the bolt, stick the new pulley bearing on there, boom. But I hope that's all it is. It sounds like it's not coming from the alternator pulley or the water pump pulley, but it, you know, it's hard to to detect with the engine running, you know, and all that noise, but it, it sounds like it's either the idler pulley or the tension pulley. So I hope it's one of the two because that's an easy fix. And at first I thought, you mean I got a bad bearing after 22,000 miles? But then again, you got to think, they make 100,000 of these bearings in one run. So somebody's got to get a defective one somewhere along the line. And it just it looks like it's had to be me. So I'll take the van in 1030 Monday morning and hopefully I'm out of there in two hours. So I think that's plenty of time for replacing a pulley bearing. And the way they do it is they don't pull the bearing out. They just put a whole new pulley assembly on there anyway. The bearing already comes installed. So wish me luck on that. I hope it's something simple, but I think that's all it is. And that brings me to another point. If you notice something going on with your van, don't procrastinate. Take care of it immediately because if you're van dwelling, it's your everything. Your van is your house. It's your car. It's, 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 it is your world. So I'm taking care of my world, and uh, I hope that's all it is. Other, I mean, the van's running great, um, nice and smooth, and you know, no hesitation. It's just that chirp, and mostly when it's cold. And from experience, I've even known a belt just to chirp when it's cold, and it's nothing you can do about it. Some belts just do that. But this is not my first winter in this van, so it didn't do it last winter. So I'm thinking it's the bearing. All right, enough of that. Let's move on to the next thing I want to talk about. Uh, prepping. Um, preparing before you go out full-time nomadic. I've seen so much conflicting advice on this. I've seen people say they went out with a thousand bucks in their pocket, and then they just headed out. And I thought, you know, that's... I don't want to say you're asking for trouble to do that, but man, you got to have luck on your side to just head out with only a thousand dollars saved. That just seems uh really loose and dangerous to me. But then again, you know, my I'm wired as a as a uh, as being prepared. That's just the way my brain works. You know, I want to have things in order before I set forth on a project. So we could debate all day how much money you need to have. But I would say 5000 minimum, minimum. You can go through $5,000 so quick it would make your head spin. But if you budget well and you don't have any emergency breakdowns, you could live on ten or 12000 a year if you don't have any things that pop up. But... We know how life is. Let's just say you had an issue with a crown on your tooth like I had. And all you had was 5000 and no dental insurance. Well, guess what? You just lost 1000 of that 5000 just for a crown. That's how quickly it can go. So I guess uh, I'm just... I don't know if I'm trying to play dad here or what I'm trying to do. I just hate to see people not be successful in what they're trying to do. I love to see people succeed. I just, it makes me very sad when I see people having a lot of trouble 
trying to get things off the ground, and maybe they just didn't wait quite long enough, didn't save that nest egg quite as big as they should have. I don't want to be that person that, say I get out on the road, I break down, and let's say I'm in a bind and somebody does help me. Well, gosh, I don't want to be a burden where well, say, they'll say, well, you just pay me back. Well, yeah, but you're taking money from those people who need it for themselves to do things they need, food and living expenses. I don't want to be that person. I want to be set from the day I head out on my journey. I don't want to have to work a day for at least six months. I want to get all that travel out of my system. I want to travel on a strict budget. I'll still be able to have fun. I'll still be able to see things. And then after that four to six month period, then I'm going to go back to work. But if my plan comes together, it's not going to be a 40 hour, 60 hour a week job like I've been dealing with my whole life. It's going to be more like 30 hours a week because I am going to have my budget in place where that's the income I need, not only to maintain, but also to have a little increase at the end of each month too. So take it from my fatherly advice that I I just don't want to see you start too soon with too little money. Uh, I just... I'm afraid that would be a recipe for disaster. One breakdown, one medical emergency. And you say, well, Maddie, that could happen to me right now anyway. You're right. You're absolutely right. But I say, um, err on the side of caution with preparation. I was never a Boy Scout. Man, I would have made a great one. I can't believe my father didn't ever put me in the Boy Scout. But I get this, uh, this uh, the way my brain is wired, I get it from my dad. He's the same way. And I'll tell you another thing. My dad's never been in a seriously financially strapped situation either because he's always been so particular and so prepared. And, uh, you know, I've got to advise anyone thinking about doing the van thing, going nomadic and not working as much as you are now. Just hold on, hang in there, build up your nest egg. I know it. I know how anxious you can be because I'm the same way. I mean, every couple of days, you know, I'm just so anxious just to go and do and see national parks. Man, I can't wait to go and see them. Well, guess what? They cost money. I mean, I don't want to be uh, a nomad. And where I have all the time in the world to go and see these attractions and sites that I want to see, but not have the money to do it. So that's what I'm trying to get across to you on this on this video. But maybe on the future videos, we'll change from just van life to more like van life plus uh, prepping and budgeting and minimalism. Because that is really near and dear to my heart. The minimalism and the budgeting. And the more serious you get about get into it, man, it's just uh, it's very liberating to your mind to not have all that stuff and and uh, debt holding you back. So maybe we'll focus more on that in the future. So anyway, I'm about to go to Kroger. I've got to buy some uh, groceries, and that's another part of uh, budgeting. You know, I plan out what I'm going to buy before I even walk in there. I have a set limit of what I'm going to spend. You know, I'm getting serious about this, guys. Um, and I guess I'll throw this out there, too. I got to do better. I'm looking at my banking app, and you know the cheapest month I've had since I lived in a van? It's not as cheap as you might think. The cheapest month was $1,301. That's what I spent in a month living full-time in a van, with no bills, that's how much I spent. Now, this past month, it was a lot more because I had the, the, the crown and the root canal to pay for. And I also had van insurance come up at the same time. So, 
You know, some months are not much different. Your spending's almost the same as it is if you live in an apartment, to tell you the truth. But if everything's going great in your life, the cheapest I've actually been to do it was $1,301. I was thinking I could do it for less than 1000 I don't know. Was I, was I naive thinking that it could be that cheap? So um, I'm in the process of going through a line-by-line item, all the categories of my spending. I'm still doing that because I'm trying to um, pinpoint the areas that you know I've got to make some drastic changes in. Because there I was thinking I could live in a van for less than a thousand a month, when actually I've never even come close to that. Thirteen oh one was the, was the cheapest month I've ever had, and that was uh. Let's see. July, August, and September were very similar. Um, October, November, I had other expenses come up. I had to buy the other solar panels. Remember those? And I splurged and got the guitar. <laughs> So I'm thinking about just, uh, I went to buy guitar strings the other day and I thought, do I go ahead and buy the five pack and save a dollar or just buy the one pack that I need? I just bought the one pack. <laughs> That's how cheap I'm trying to be. So, uh, I wouldn't mind hearing your comments on this. How much you spend a month living full time in a van? And, uh, if you have a van payment, I don't, but if you do, you know, include that in it because that's taking place of your rent payment, I guess. And uh, I've heard people say, well, let's say I went and bought a new van. Let's say the payment was 450 a month. Well, isn't that better than the 1100 a month I was paying on rent? Maybe, but that van depreciates in value too. So I don't know how to answer that question. It's, uh, it's a toss up in my mind. So we'll we'll wrap it up here, guys. Um, I'm going to go buy groceries. Sorry, I forgot to pull Buddy out again. Gosh darn it. Well, please forgive me. We'll see Buddy on the next video. So I hope everybody uh, have, has a great day. Be well and click the bell.